Okay, so we are doing difference of squares, or difference of two squares, which we also call dots. Difference of two squares. What does difference mean in math class? Subtract. Subtract. Okay, so we are literally subtracting two squares. Okay, so... Okay, so difference of two squares, examples of perfect square numbers. So we have 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. We know these are perfect square numbers because 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared, 5 squared, 6. So what's 7 squared? 49. What's 8 squared? And what's 9 squared? 81. Does it stop or does it keep going forever? Keep going. Yeah, it keeps going forever. Okay, if you're given a number, so you all have this yellow paper. Okay, we're only talking about the squares, which is just the first column. We're not looking at any of those other columns right now. Just the first one, yes? Okay, um, knowing that, it doesn't go forever. Okay, there's 14 squared, 15 squared, there's more. So if I give you a number and you're not sure if it's a perfect square, you could do the square root. Okay, if it gives you a decimal, it's not a perfect square. If it gives you a whole number, it is a perfect square. Does that make sense? Okay, so knowing that, um, I'm going to show you why when we solve these, we only get two terms. Because before, when we would multiply a binomial times a binomial, we would get a trinomial answer. Okay, so the reason being is this is the same. So if we had x minus 2 times x plus 2, those match. Okay. So if we were to distribute that, we would do x times x, which is x squared, x times 2, which is positive 2x, negative 2 times x, which is negative 2x, and then negative 2 times positive 2, which is negative 4. Also, do you have a pass? You got to hand it to me. Okay, so these middle two terms zero out because a positive and a negative are the same. So we get x squared minus 4. They're a zero pair because it's positive and negative. So that's why we end up with the two terms and the difference of them. Okay, because the positive and the negative make them zero out. Okay, so knowing that, we're going to talk about after... We put them in order and take out the GCF because shouldn't we do that all the time first no matter what when we're factoring? Yes. So after we've put it in order and taken out our GCF, these are the things you look for to decide if you can use this method. So they must be subtraction. No addition. Both terms must be perfect squares. Now, the way we know if our variables are perfect squares is they must have an even, so their exponents, sorry, exponents must be even numbers. So as long as your variables have even numbered exponents, then they are perfect squares. Okay, and then lastly, and this is when we talk about quadratic standard form. AX squared plus BX plus C okay when talking about standard form there's no B term B equals zero
Okay, I know it's weird because this formula uses B, but that's technically your C term because it doesn't have a variable. Okay, but so we're missing the middle term when it comes to like quadratic standard form, but this is just our formula for solving. Okay. So instead of putting the B there, we would put the C. No, we're still going to use this, but when it comes to if we're talking about standard form, like if we were trying to solve this using the box, like we've learned. So say we saw this, and we were like, well, A, B, and C. Well, A is 1, and there's no term in the middle that has an M. Therefore, B is 0, and C is negative 81. That's what I mean. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you could technically solve it this way because B is 0. That's a number. Okay, you could still solve it using um, the box, or here A is 1, so you wouldn't even have to do the box. You would just have to do the X. But this method will be easier. Okay, so knowing that, I'm just going to rewrite the formula because that way I can point to it as we're working. Um, and y'all can see it so I can zoom in. Okay, one thing I want you to realize, do you think order matters? Do you think if I flip-flop these and put A plus B and then A minus B, do you think that matters? It does not. So if you had A plus B first and then A minus B, that's totally fine. Because think about it. What's 2 times 3? 6. What's 3 times 2? Does order matter when you're multiplying? No. So it doesn't matter if these are flip-flopped, okay? So like if you're checking your work or something or whatever and somebody has plus first and you have minus first, that's okay as long as they match and they're just flip-flopped, okay? Okay, so let's look at the first one. Something squared minus something squared. So we want to figure out what squared minus what squared. Well, the first one is just m squared. Oh, minus 9 squared? And then it's 9 squared. 81 is 9 squared. So a is whatever's inside of your first set of parentheses. So a is m. And b is whatever's inside of your second set of parentheses. So m is, a b is 9, sorry. Do you listen? We're using this formula to solve. I said if we were talking about quadratic standard form, B is 0. Okay, so I told you I was a little weird, but that's just how the formula is. So A minus B, A plus B. Well, A is M minus B is 9. M plus 9. So there's your answer. So if you wanted to check your work, could you? Yes. yes, on the ones that only have one variable. Now the ones that have multiple variables you can't do, but on problems that have one variable you can. So you're just going to type what was given to you in Y1 and what you came up with in Y2. You can't type an M, but you can always use X for any variable. So when you go to your table, Y1 and Y2 should all match, and they do, so we did it correctly. So now let's look at number two. Okay, so number two, does it have a GCF? Yes. Does it? No. Okay, is it in order? Yes. Yes, so we're just going to get started. So what squared minus what squared? So two squared gives me that, and then C squared gives me C squared, and the what squared gives me 25. So A, B, so A is my first set, which is 2C, and B is my second set of parentheses, which is 5. Would you be able to check this one in the calculator? Yes. Yes, because there's only one variable. Any questions with those? Okay, so start looking at number three. Okay, is there a GCF? Yes. 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 Is it in order? Yes. yes. It is in order. Okay, so what is my GCF? 
Yeah, and if you're not sure, remember you can do math right 9, 9 comma 36, and it'll tell you 9. So 9 is your GCF. Now, do they have any letters in common? No, this is X and Y, this is Z, so we cannot take any letters out. But we can take the 9 out. Okay, so knowing that, I'm going to divide by 9, divide by 9, and I'm left with x squared y squared minus 4z squared. Okay. So remember, I always take my GCF and put it down at the bottom where I'm going to put my answer, and then I cross it out. Now, I need to write the inside as something squared minus something squared. Well, what squared gives me x squared, y squared? Well, x and y. x squared is x squared. y squared is y squared. Two z, because two squared is four, and then z squared is z squared. <coughs> so a is what? X y and z is, I mean b. Dang it, two z. You got me. Okay. So my final answer is nine. Don't forget to bring down your GCF. And then it's x y plus two z or minus x y minus two. So I put plus first on this one just to see that it doesn't matter if plus is first or second. So if you put minus first, that's totally fine. Now, could you check that one in your calculator? No, because you have three variables. Okay, look at number four. Is it in order? Does it have a GCF? No. Okay, so is it subtraction? No, so can we even do this method? No. no. So if it doesn't have a GCF, it's only two variables, and it doesn't have subtraction, then it's prime. What does prime mean? What does it mean to be prime? Uh, it doesn't have a whole number. It well, it does, but what's the only option? Uh, one. One in itself, right? So like seven, not number seven, not problem seven, but the number seven is prime because the only number that divides into seven, the only factors of seven are one and seven, right? Okay, so this is prime because we could not take anything out of it. Now, there was a problem on our test review for last test that I want to go back and look at really fast. Okay, if you look at number 11, 11 was prime. We didn't have a GCF. There was nothing we could do, okay? It was prime. But look at number 13. A lot of people put prime, and I didn't take off because we hadn't had this talk yet, but it had a GCF, so we took out number 4 because that was a GCF, right? <coughs> so is this technically a prime problem? No. No, why not? Because it had a GCF. Because it had a GCF other than 1. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So prime means the only thing you can take out is 1. But we took out a 4. Therefore, this problem was not prime. It was just a GCF problem. Does that make sense? OK. So look at number 5. Does it have a GCF? Yes, it does. And you can tell because they're both even numbers. 36 and 100 are both even. Now, if you're like me, I cannot look at those numbers and just tell what the GCF is. I know I could take out a 2, but I don't know if it's bigger than 2. So I could do math right 9, 36 comma 100, and it tells me 4. So 4 is my GCF. Does it have any letters in common? D squared. So I take out 4D squared. And when I take that out, I'm left with 9. D squared cancels G squared H squared minus 25 A squared C squared. The D squareds cancel. Is it still a perfect square minus a perfect square? No, yes. yes. 9 is a perfect square, 25 is a perfect square, and all of my exponents are even. So we need to rewrite it as something squared minus something 
squared. Now don't forget to bring down your GCF so you don't forget about it. So what squared gives you 9? And then G squared is just G, H squared is just H. So 25 is 5AC because A squared, C squared. So A is 3GH, B is 5AC. So we have 3GH minus 5AC, 3GH plus 5AC. Any questions with that? Okay, so look at number six. Is there a GCF? Because they're not perfect squares. Yes. I see A's and B's for both. A cubed, B cubed. So when I take that out, the B cubes match, 5 minus 3 is 2. The A cubes match, 5 minus 3 is 2. So bring down your GCF. Now, what does this look like? A squared, B squared. Yeah, your formula. So what comes next? A minus B, A plus B. Perfect. It already told you what was A and what was B because it's literally your formula. Okay, we're not going to do number seven. We're just going to do number eight because number eight will answer all of our questions for number seven. Yes? Wouldn't it be A squared and B squared since it's five? A squared minus B squared. But then it broke down even oh, further because then what squared gives you A squared is A. What squared gives you B squared is B. Which we skipped that step only because that literally was our formula. So we didn't do that. Okay, look at number eight. What's wrong with it? It's out of order. So is your 16 positive or negative? Positive. positive. So when I put it in order, what does it become? Negative x to the 12th power plus 16. Now what's wrong with it? The negatives in front, are you allowed to have a negative in front? No, no we, and we've even talked about that with GCFs. If you have a negative in front, you have to take a negative out, right? So we have to take a negative out. Um, is there any other GCF? No, so we're just taking out a negative, which is the same thing as dividing by negative 1. So that cancels this negative we're left with x to the positive 12 minus 16. Now is it a perfect square minus a perfect square? Yes. So now we can keep going. So we're going to rewrite this as something squared minus something squared. And I'm going to bring that negative down so I don't forget it. So what squared gives me x to the 12th power? We'll think about it really fast. If I have 12 x's, if I have 12 x's and I'm trying to split this to make them match. Well, if I cut this in half, how many do I have on each side? Six. Six. So you literally are just cutting your exponent in half. And that works for all of them. What's half of two? One. one. So isn't that what we were doing on all of our other ones? Weren't we just putting a exponent of one on the inside? Okay, so we have x to the sixth. And what squared gives you 16? <coughs> So I'm going to put my plus first again. We have x to the 6 plus 4, x to the 6 minus 4. Now, before you box your answer, anytime you still have an exponent and subtraction, you have to check it. Is this a perfect square minus a perfect square? Yes. It is. It's still a perfect square minus a perfect square. So am I done? No. No. So we have to bring down that first half that doesn't break down any further because it's plus and there's no GCF because we already took it out. And I need to break this down further. 
So what squared minus what squared gives me those two things? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we cut it in half, so this is going to be x to the third and 2. So I have x to the third power plus 2 x to the third power minus 2. So again, I have an exponent and subtraction. Is that a perfect square minus a perfect square? Yes. No, it's cubed. An odd no. number is not a perfect square, so we're done. That's your answer. Does that make sense, though? So if you still have a perfect square minus a perfect square, you have to keep going.